This is a Voltic Frequency uh, Response Analyzer model TF2000, something that's been uh, sitting on the shelf at work for the last 22 plus years, um, and it gets calibrated every year. It's one of those pieces of equipment that it goes for calibration. No one questions why it's been calibrated because no one's used it in 20 years. Anyway, uh, its tone came up for calibration on Thursday, and uh, the uh, calibration engineers came and picked it up from the uh, laboratory and uh, took it into their van, what they do every year with this particular piece of equipment. Uh, plugged it in, and uh, well, the story was quite amusing actually. And it was told by a, a colleague who, of mine who was standing outside having a cigarette. And he said uh, he saw them walk into the van and uh, with equipment in their hands, and then uh, about a couple of minutes later, there was a sort of dull thud. And the door was quickly opened up at the, the calibration van, and all the all the technicians come running out, coughing, and there's sort of like a slight yellow haze uh, following them out of the van. Um, and it turned out that this power analyzer uh, decided that was it. It had enough. It wasn't going to be if it wasn't going to be used, it was going to uh, commit suicide and blow up. So the um, it was scrapped basically. The, the, we we decided that you know we don't use it. It wasn't worth calibrating because we we didn't understand why it was being calibrated anyway. But it wasn't worth repairing um, if no one's going to use it. Um, now I uh, suggested I could repair it for them, but they weren't interested in that. They weren't you know they just wanted it off the, off the records. It's just not worth the hassle for them to, to have it repaired and recalibrated again. So uh, here it is. Um, the boss very kindly gave it to me. Um, and uh, I ne immediately thought I know what's th well. I think I know what's wrong with it. Should I say um, when we uh, description came through, it sounded to me like a uh, typical sound and smell of a burnt out um, capacitor on the front end of the uh, inputs. You know the uh, IEC uh, X capacitors that are designed to uh, filter out noise. Well, these capacitors fail with age, as they do on quite a lot of the equipment and I think if you've been a long time follower of one of my of my YouTube channel you'll know that the HP um, 4261 did the same thing when we switched it on it went up with a big bang and the capacitor blew up the caps become leaky, ba leaky basically and they're across the mains and you start dip dissipating a bit of power and then you know they just they just short out and blow up so I think that's what's happened with this um, so we'll uh, take the cover off and have a look. Um, it's quite a nice bit of kit actually, where it looks in nice condition. It's a very solid, sort of chunky thing. Now Voltec are well known for their uh, power analyzer, their PM series of power analyzers. Um, what this will do is, I understand, as I understand from one of the engineers who's used it in the past, um, it has an inbuilt um, signal generator uh, so that will generate various frequencies from the generator output and we can measure uh, a, the, the frequency response of a, of a piece of a, a gear, whatever it is, and we've used it for responses of uh, feedback loops in um, power supplies, but there's no reason why you couldn't use it in an amplifier. Uh, it will tell you the harmonics, it's not the harmonic distortion, but it will show you the harmonics and where they are on the, on the display. And the print option is uh, to print to a external dot matrix type printer, on the back here, oh, excuse me, and a serial port on the back here as well. So you can either use a Centronics parallel port, uh, which is a conventional dot matrix, or through a serial port printer. Now, apparently, the, mo the, the one we use at work is a, a, a large, clunky type Epsom dot matrix printer. We connect up to this Centronics port, and and it will actually plot plot you out a response graph, which is really nice. Uh, which is and it could be quite useful. Um, it's never going to be as good as the uh, HP 8903 uh, with the uh, Peak Millet software on it, but uh, it should certainly give you a, a decent idea of frequency response of the amplifier or whatever you're testing. Um, it's pretty basic, really. It looks like uh, these are select the uh, various ranges, um, a decade select, so it basically moves the, de the digit along from the decimal point, really, shift the decimal point to the right or to the left. Uh, the generator, how we set the generator up uh, and run and stop. So hopefully it should be fairly straightforward. 
So I think the first thing to do is get the top off it, have a look inside and see if, uh, see if it is actually the capacitor that's blown up. Well, my suspicions were correct with the input filter. Sure enough, the input filter's blown up. Uh, this is the uh, IEC input filter, um, and you see this is the uh, circuit for the input filter, um, and this is the connector I've torn apart. It, it stinks. It's got a. It's not an unpleasant smell. It's sort of like a. It's almost a sweet smell. Anyway, this capacitor's blown. It's you can see there. It's got a split down it um, and it's blown up um, and inside here is just a load of potting with possibly the rest of the components inside so for the time being until I'd source another one of these um, we'll wire the connection straight to the uh, to the plug power it up and see what happens once we've disconnected the rest of that capacitor and you see inside it's uh, not an awful lot of interest to me but uh, Quite nicely made, nicely laid out. Um, power supply sections down here. I'm assuming that the power supply is undamaged. It's got um, the main transformer here, which is probably a bulk of the weight on this unit. Um, and then this looks like the uh, what's this? The diff probably this is the diff uh, the differential amplifier here. This section here, uh, and the, we've got some connectors around the side here. These are our generator connectors on the bottom down here. So it will go back to this board. Um, so, it's got a gold star chip in it. Hmm. Surprised it made in uh, made in the UK. I'd expect to uh, have uh, maybe uh, more sort of like European stuff. Maybe Philips or something like that. There's a Hyundai chip there as well. NEC, that's the sort of thing I'd expect to see. What else have we got in here? Uh, so we've got a, um, what's that, is that, what is that, it's not Texas Instruments, is it, is that Texas Instruments, or is it Siemens, what else we got down here, Mitsubishi, is that, someone will correct me on there, there's a Motorola chip, we know that symbol, so every manufacturer under the sun, and this thing, obviously the cheapest parts they could get hold of, I should doubt, uh, what we've got, okay. TL1, what's that, 0822, that's probably a, Oh, pamp. Okay, so let's. Uh, God, it stinks this thing. Uh, I'm going to clean this up. Uh, we'll connect the wires back up, and then we'll see if the thing works. Okay, we made a temporary repair to the input filter. Basically, what I've done is I've just basically taken out the uh, metal cage that was surrounding the filter. We wired the main straight to the uh, unit, so we've got no. Uh, the capacitor's exploding. We need more of the input filter blowing up. Connected up the power to the mains, um, replaced the fuse that's in the back of the IEC connector because that had popped. Switch it on, see what it does. Oh. Put some pretty lights up. Okay, so frequency 100 hertz, amplitude, and bias volts DC. So, doing something. That's good. Let's uh, plug it into a scope and see if it does anything. Vaguely interesting. So let me just uh, connect the scope up, the power scope up, and we'll have a look, see what it does. I'm expecting the audio output to come out of here to produce a reasonably good sine wave. Um, it's just a question of how what easy it is to control. Uh, so let me just set the scope up, and we'll have a look. Okay, I've connected it up to the scope and see what we get. So, um, uh, how does this work, generator? frequency okay um, well, that can't be direct entry because there's any oh okay yeah maybe it is so let's go one kilohertz so one kilohertz uh, now what enter amplitude hmm. uh, what do you reckon one volt two volts one volt enter DC bias no thank you enter Generate A to stop, instant or zero? Mm -hmm. What's that mean? So we go for zero, enter. Amplitude compensation. What? No. Generator to analysis, delay seconds. Uh, 42. 
Enter. Generate enable. Enter. Right. Now out on the output. Just getting a little noise. Right, so let me just check. Doesn't mean I know what I'm doing. Run. Nope. Stop. Generator phase. Averaging. All oh, long. No idea. Let's go through this again. Uh, enter. Have enter. Gain results dB or ratio. Enter. Oh, here we go. Sweep. Gain results. Enter. Sweep auto. Sweep linear. Sweep up. Minimum frequency. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, 100 hertz. Maximum frequency. Let's go 1 kilohertz. Enter. Number of steps. 15. Th oh, okay. We'll have as many steps as possible. Oh, is that as far as we go? Well, I can't get to 120. Okay, 60 then. Ready to sweep. Enter. So what do I do? How do I sweep? Run. Oh! Got something on the display. We've got a fairly ragged looking sine wave, but we've certainly got a uh, an output. So it's doing something. Uh, Okay. I really am going to have to read the manual on what this does. So stop. Ready to sweep. So let me just. Why did it not sweep though? It was only producing one frequency. So let's uh, try again. Enter. Um, generator. Amplitude. We've got one volt. That's okay. Enter. DC bias. Don't want any DC bias on there. Ready to sweep. Enter. So press generator. No, that's not right. Now run. Oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to download the manual for this, but um, it's not self-explanatory. Okay, we've got the generator output there again. I can do anything with it when it's on. Generate, generate, gen to analysis, delay, wait. Well, what's it waiting for? See, I'm not sure if this can just be used as a signal generator and a sort of like a distortion analyzer. Because obviously we're not putting anything in. And to be honest with you, I've got no idea what I'm doing. Let's stop that. Let's have a look. Oh, see if we can find anything. Print to parallel port. Nope. Enter. Print to serial port off. Um... Generator plus phase or gain plus phase. Let's go single again then. So single frequency. I'm going to go for one. Is that what's our maximum frequency? This I think it's only up to go about 200 kilohertz. I think. Enter. Run. Okay, let's certainly put the frequency up. I'm producing looks like a quite a nice sine wave considering I'm triggering halfway down the scope. It should be quite a pure sine wave because it's supposed to be a, an analyzer. Okay, I suppose we could actually let's have a look at it, see what its distortion is. Point two seven percent distortion. Oh, it's doing something odd. It's running. Was that the delay it was talking about? It's going nuts. I don't know what the hell it's doing. Oh, it's doing something very interesting. Okay, so basically, we're not sure what this thing does, um, but it's a. Uh, Quite an interesting piece of kit, and uh, it clearly seems to be working to a fashion. Not sure if it's working correctly or not. So what I'll do is I'll get the manual. We'll have a closer look.